Welcome to the Lunch and Learn webinar recap, where I'll share the highlights from the Web Report Writer Basics session. All right, so you're looking at the HomeGage dashboard right now, and the first thing to know, if you don't know already, is how do you get to the Web Report Writer? So when you log into your dashboard, you can click right here to Web Report Writer and it will open up the report writing tool on your browser. But the thing is with Web Writer, it's super cool because you can be on any device. I can be on a tablet, whether it be Android or iOS or a phone or my computer or my Mac computer. I can be on any device. I just open up the internet, go to homegage.com, log in and click web writer. If you're using this tool exclusively or quite a bit, you can even bookmark it so you don't have to go through those steps. You can just go directly to this page. We also have a standalone app that will work offline as well. The standalone app goes on Android or iOS. The benefit is, is that all the instructions on how to navigate that's all gonna be the same no matter what device you're on. So that's just another thing to point out. Everything that I'm gonna show you here, when you go to your mobile device, it'll be super familiar because it's all basically the same. There are a few things that change slightly because mobile will do these handy dandy things like it might stick a menu right up here when you click on the three lines. The app will have a button that says sync data. So, you know, when it's not connected to the internet, obviously you need to be able to push that information, the report to here. And so it's just one button. You just have your report open, you just hit sync and there you go. So it's a really smooth process. While we're over here, I'll just do a quick little tour for people who are not familiar, and then we'll kind of dive into writing a report. On the left-hand side, you'll see a spot where you can add your logo. You have a library section. So this will be where you can, if you want, you can always work on your library while you are in an actual report, but you can go to your library as a standalone section to manage your global comments, disclaimers, your SOPs, and your descriptions. And your descriptions are kind of like the options for your styles and materials and things like that. Anything you do in the library, any changes that you make, those changes will be available in any of your templates. So it's kind of cool to have those, the templates and the library separated out so that you don't have to maintain different templates every time you change a comment or add comments. You can just go to your library and do it, and then all that will be available in any of your templates. In the library, it's very self-explanatory, honestly, so I won't spend tons of time here, but you can go into property overview. You've got descriptions, some basic ones here, and it's pretty easy to go in and edit. So you got ground conditions, for example, dry, snow, wet, you know, we can add damp, for instance. And then once you add a new option, always click the orange arrow. And that kind of locks it in. You can hit save. But I will point out there is an option for a default. So let's say that maybe you're in the desert and nine times out of 10, this dry option is always going to be the one that you'll choose. And you don't want to select it every time. You can just hit dry there and then hit save, and it will show up every time when you open up a report. That can definitely be a speed trick for you for anything that is maybe 90% of the time or 80% of the time always gonna be that selection. You can always, when you are in a report, just remove it super easily with a click if it's not that for that particular report. So you can add your own by clicking add, and, and that's pretty easy to do as well. There's a disclaimer. So this property overview disclaimer section, that would be for your main SOPs, standards of practice, kind of beginning of the report information. 
and you can create a new one pretty easily here. You can also, there's a bunch already in the library and you can edit it. It's pretty self-explanatory. The library also has all of your components or your sections and it's in an alphabetical order. The order is all changed when you're in your template. So you can pop into appliances and just see what items are here. You don't change the items here. You actually just, it's just an easy way to navigate to say, oh, I wanna go to the cooktop comments. So you'll see three icons here. The one that says 10 and it has a little comment bubble, that's gonna take you to your comment library for that item where you can go ahead and edit the comment or you can create a new one or you can use the search. Right here where there's a circle with an I and this one has a number five next to it, that's just saying that there are five item details or descriptions. So for cooktop, you can edit the different descriptions that you wanna have available. So we've got energy source, manufacturer name, stuff like that. Um, and then the hand is like, whoa, that's a disclaimer. So the hand is disclaimers for that specific item. And it all kind of functions the same way. The little side menu will pop up and it's pretty easy to figure out how to add and modify those, I think. And then to kind of move out of appliances and go into any other section, you just click it or click it again and it will collapse. So that's a little bit about the library templates right here. This is another section where you can create different types of templates for different scenarios. You can add a new template by just clicking add inspection template, give it a name. This one that says create from starter template, that's going to be your fresh out of the box, nothing's been modified template um, that HomeGage will give you to get going. Copy existing, you can select that and you can copy uh, any one of your existing templates. Let's say I'll do, I'll copy my condo template and then I'll click add. Now I can go into the template, so I'll click on condo. And I'll just point out a few things that you can do here. So for instance, you know, maybe I want to reorder the um, everything that I'm seeing here. So I'll go to reorder systems and I can move things around. So for a condo template, you know, I don't want to see roof up front because it's not part of a typical condo template. So I can just kind of drag it and move it towards the bottom. I can't quite completely delete it from it right here. But just so you know, when you're writing a report, if nothing has been filled out for the roof, it's not gonna actually show on the report. So you can just stick it all the way down at the bottom and then just select done. For the templates, another thing to point out is creating the inspection items. So I can be in landscaping and hardscaping. And these are all my items that come with the template, but maybe I don't want gate. Maybe gates are never there. So for whatever reason in this inspection, because it's a condo and maybe I don't really even do tons of stuff that's landscaping. So I can go in and I can hit delete and completely remove it and kind of customize this how I want it to show. I can go in and I can easily change things. So, you know, maybe I want to call it driveway, but maybe I want to call it driveway and walkways. You know, I want it to be a little bit more generic and cover both of those. I can change the name and hit save. And you'll see here, it kind of shows how many items and how many comments are associated with that. I can add my own item, just like a brand new one. I can click add item. It gives me some options if I'm kind of duplicating that I can select, but if I'm adding a brand new landscaping, hardscaping item, I would just go to other. And then I can change the name here and I can say, okay, um, say there's a really cool fountain. And then I can hit add. Pretty easy to do. Um, one more thing I do wanna point out though, you'll notice that all these items have a circle with a little line and that means that that item is not tested in the template as soon as you add it to a report the report is going to reflect this and all these items are going to say not tested and the thing is not tested 
will show on the report. And sometimes people don't realize that. So I like to point that out. So anything that says not tested, that item will show on the report. If you don't want it to show on your report, like if you want to exclude it, you can choose to change that. So what I often tell people to do is sometimes it's nice to just kind of go to your template and select all. So I've selected all my items and just kind of by default right off the bat, I don't want them all to appear on the report. I want them all to just not be, be there until I say, hey, that's been inspected or hey, that's got an issue, that kind of thing. So I might go here in my template and go to this area where it says status. And you can choose not uh, satisfactory if you want everything to be checked off by default. I am not doing that. I've heard from other inspectors that it's kind of a little bit more safe to go with not applicable. So everything shows as NA, and then that means when I open up the report, I don't have to worry about something appearing on the report that I didn't inspect, but I also didn't need to, and it didn't need to show up there. So just pointing that out, I'm going to go here and I'll do that to my building exteriors as well. So I'll go to status and I'll do not applicable. Um, you can also do other things too. Um, you can edit or you can also remove locations. So if you see something, a section that has different locations showing up and you just want to clear that out, you can also do that by in a bulk fashion by clicking all, select all, and then doing remove locations. And that just kind of clears it out. So when the printed report shows to the customer, they just don't have those uh, little identifiers that says cooktop, kitchen, dishwasher, mudroom, things like that. So that's all personal preference and you can customize that in the template. I will go over to this one area down here that it's kind of like a sneak preview, but it's going to be available to our WebWriter users very soon. So there's this section that says report design. You don't have this on yours. This is just on mine. So I could give you a little sneak preview, but we're going to have a section where you can kind of customize the look a little bit more. A lot of inspectors have been wanting that. So um, you'll be able to choose different cover layouts and different color palettes uh, really easily. And um, you can do different ones. So you don't always have to stick to the same one. So that's something that is in the works and you'll be hearing about it soon. Down here, you got a link to the inspector dashboard, so you can always get back to your main dashboard, which is, I've got it in this tab up here, and that's where you publish your reports and send them out. So while I'm here, I am gonna show you quickly how to basically sync your appointment to WebWriter. So I'm on the dashboard, and one way to start a report in WebWriter is to start an appointment, and it's kind of the best practice because with an appointment, you can link a pre-inspection agreement that requires a signature before the person views the report. You can also link a invoice. They have the option to pay online if you're using HomeGage payments and all that really easily. And there's automated emails that go out when you book an appointment. The day that you book the appointment, it will go out and then everybody gets a reminder email right before. So there's a lot of benefits to the calendar. And I've already started an appointment right here. So I've already filled it out and booked the appointment and sent out the agreement. And then to sync it to WebWriter, all I have to do is just click this little plus sign right here. And that basically takes me to the WebWriter. And because I have multiple templates, it allows me to choose what template I want to use. And I'll do my, my basic template, or actually I'll do residential. And then once it does that, it will create the inspection for you. And at this point, what you could do if you're using the app on your phone and you were not going to be connected to the internet, what you do is you open up your app and then go to your WebWriter app and hit sync data. And that will pull this inspection onto your phone or your tablet so you can be free of any internet connections and continue on with your inspection. So that's just one tip for using the mobile app. And, and so here I am, I'm in my report. 
And first things first, I'll go ahead and add a cover photo. So I'll just click on this little icon right here of the pen. And then I get a choice to add media. I'm on a computer, so it's going to allow me to pick any image from my computer. But on a mobile device, you'll get the choice of adding a photo from your photo gallery on your phone or taking a picture right then and there. So I am selecting my cover photo. And then I'll click done. I'll move on to, we've got an area for a property condition summary. Feel free to fill it out if you feel like it or don't. You know, it might be something that if you are feeling called to write a little short condition summary. So this is not a summary. So don't get it confused with that because as you're building out your comments and your pictures, the software creates a summary automatically for you. This is more just kind of a super summary, like house was redone really well all the remodeling was top notch enjoy your new home it's like one of those kind of comments or if there's something really really like a major flaw that you want to point out like house is pretty good but the roof is the main thing you can always use this spot for that some inspectors might put a little just a friendly note to their client here as well so you can just add whatever you'd like there and then hit save uh, disclaimers easy to add these so these are like your sops and basically you can just toggle on any disclaimer that you want to add so i've got a couple here you can also click create new disclaimer and add a new one if you like as well and then as we go down to the descriptions these are just general you'll notice my dry has already populated because i set it as a default i can go in it's really easy to kind of fill everything out here you can select rain add in my square footage present during inspection you know i can multi-select people as well and then maybe on the fly i need to edit something so for example let's say present during the, the inspection i want to go to edit fields and add an hvac technician i can go to edit here and then super easy on the fly i can just add that hit the orange arrow, don't forget about that. I can also say if it's a default and then I'll hit save. I can add new as well, just brand new. So this stuff is pretty self-explanatory, so I won't get too crazy into that. And the cool thing is everything I just showed you, that will apply later on when you're adding descriptions and details. You have the same kind of workflow and same kind of instructions where you have this little bar that pops out and you click edit and things get added the same way. So it's a really easy tool to learn. So at the bottom, there's an area called the home tour, and this is where you can add your complimentary photos. There's a couple ways to add home tour photos. One of them is right here where you can click add media and then add a couple of your pictures if you like, select open, and there you go. They've all been added. You know, maybe you want to go a little bit further and put a description under each image. You can. You can just click on the image. There's an area for a caption. So we'll say at this point, when you are leaving captions, you might think you have to hit save, but you don't. It saves automatically. You can just hit the arrow and go to the next picture. I like to do bedroom one, bedroom two. So that's what I'll do. And you just kind of quickly can label everything. And then when you're done, you can close out. You also have options to crop or annotate. And the cool thing is you can annotate or crop, add labels on any mobile device as well. So it works on computer or mobile. Now you might be thinking, ah, oh, there's not a label under this picture. They're there and they're in the printed version, but just not right here. So if I click on that, I still have bedroom one under it. So next thing I'll point out is along this left-hand side, we've got systems, and we'll be going into that in more detail in a minute, but that's my preferred way to kind of navigate and fill out the report. So we'll be going into that in a second, but just to quickly pop in here, each section you know, has a drop down where you can go into the items. And then next, you also have locations. Some inspectors like to use this to inspect by locations. This is something where you would want to not just 
on the fly inspect by locations, you'd want to go to your template and actually customize that how you work. If you are wanting to explore that, go to your template and kind of lay it out first so things are in order and everything is aligned. And it's kind of the same thing where you drop down and you see all the different items in the bathroom. And then down here, you'll see media. So media, this is your media gallery. The cool thing is you can actually inspect right from here. We call this photo first inspecting. I did a webinar on it a while back. It's on YouTube. I like this. I like this a lot because what you do is if you come across something like a picture that you want to take a photo of, or maybe you're on a roof and you just want to take a bunch of photos with your phone. You don't really want to be in the app just yet because you want it to be fast. So you just snap, 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 snap with your phone. You can do that. And then when you get off the roof and you're on ground and you're safe, you can go here to media, click add media and I will demonstrate. So I pretended I went to a roof and I snapped all these photos and they're on my gallery of my phone and I did it all very rapidly. I can go like that. I even have a 360 down here and then I can hit open. And then in a bulk fashion, they all just kind of load up to my gallery. My next step I could do would be to add any annotations or labels if I needed to. That would be kind of the most efficient. I would first click on this. I don't really see anything that I'm pointing out right here. This is more of a, a general photo, maybe another general, general. And then this one here, you know, maybe I do want to go in and throw uh, an annotation on there. So I can go like that, hit save. I can go to the next one. Maybe it doesn't need something. So I can just kind of go through all the photos that I want to annotate really quickly and, and be done with it. So it's all taken care of right then and there. And I can just hit the arrow and go through every single one and just if they need an annotation, um, I can add it or if they need a caption. And then the next part of this photo first method, I can assign them to different areas in the report. But the cool thing is I don't have to go and navigate around the room. So for instance, this one, this one, this one, those are all general photos. I'm going to add this 360 to my general. So these are all home tour photos. So I've got them all selected. I'll hit assign. And then I'll do assign to home tour. I'll hit done. Now you'll see they all say home tour on the bottom. I can also hit the hide used just to kind of streamline what I'm looking at. And then next I can go in and I can say, okay, well, this one right here and this one right here, I'm talking about a chimney cap being cracked. I can hit assign. And then the cool thing is I can go over here and I can pop around each section and kind of look for my comment that way, or I prefer the search. I think it works the best if you search. So I'm going to do cap. I know that's in the comments. So I'm just writing cap and it kind of just removes everything else. So electrical has three comments and I'm looking for a fireplace chimney. And then I'll go to chimney flu and I just see if the comment I want is there and it is. So I'll check that and I'll hit done. All those pictures go away because they've been assigned. I'll move to my next uh, group of photos. So I've got this, this, this. I'll go to a sign and I'll say, this is an end of life, uh, end of life roof situation. So I go to roof, go to the material, nearing end of useful life. I can see the full comment if I want as well. So I can always go to manage comments to edit or see the full comment. And then I'll move on to the next one and I'll say, okay, there we go. These three, it's a plumbing vent boot. So I'll just say boot. And I know I've got a, a comment here about my um, rubber boot flashing being damaged. And I'll check that. And I got my two remaining ones. Easy peasy. I'll just click assign, go to the search, hit moss, because that's what's happening here. And I'll go to the roof and I've got my excessive moss buildup comment and done. And so basically I just kind of knocked out the whole roof section really efficiently and I didn't have to 
navigate around the report to go to the roof. Maybe plumbing vent might be actually in the plumbing sec- section. Maybe there was something that was an attic item. I was all just in the media gallery accessing those comments and just making it super efficient. That's a cool thing that might be useful for some folks inspection style, but maybe for certain situations especially. So I just wanted to point that out. Another thing on this left hand side here, we have a new feature for forms. So if you're from Florida, we've got all your forms for limits and four points. And then if you are somebody who does an MPMA uh, pest form, we've got all the state forms as well. So right now I'm just showing a few because I've customized my look, but if you go into settings, you'll see you've got a ton of different forms that you can add, but definitely take a look at forms. They all come with the software and to add a form to your report, you just click add and you can go into it. And I'm not going to demo tons about this, but it's very self-explanatory. The forms are, you just kind of check the different things. You have the option to show all where you can show the whole form and fill it out as you go. Um, Or it has this guided view where you can hit next, hit next, hit next, and, and fill everything out. All the way at the bottom, you've got an area where you can add your photos and you can add your signature right here you can add customer signatures stuff like that a cool thing about forms is that when you add comments you can also save yourself some time and you can click insert comment text and if you already have done an inspection report and you added a comment and photos and they also need to go in the form you can save yourself a little time and let's say that you know i was going to the system and I need to add this comment to my form, I can do that. I don't have to add the whole thing. Maybe the insurance people or whoever is getting the form doesn't need the full text, but you know, maybe I will add this part of the text and maybe I will add that photo. So it allows you to like pick and choose. We'll hit done. So the comments in there and it saves you a little bit of time. And then the photos are already ready to go. So that's a little bit about forms. The next thing too, uh, we'll go into, now that I've pointed out how to navigate around the media. Uh, One more thing about media I will point out, you can actually have photos in media that are not gonna be in the report. So it's just part of your natural workflow to take pictures that maybe are there as CYA, and you're not really adding them to the report, but they will be stored here. And they're stored online and backed up on your HomeGage dashboard at no extra cost to you. So I think that's a really cool thing. So we're gonna go into systems just to point out how to fill out a report using this view. This is kind of my preferred view other than doing the photo first. I like that as well. So first thing that I'll do is I'll go into Uh, general and I'll just point out that's just a general area where you can kind of build it out to say what you would like. You can add disclaimers. Nothing's really in here. You can add your own general items really easily. I'll go into roof. So we already did inspect the roof, but there might be things that you need to fill out even though you added comments and pictures. You'll still need to go to roof and add your item details. So first I'm in roof flashing, I'm gonna do, and um, you can go to the next section by hitting next and add your detail. And you can hit the next one and just kind of go through everything. If you have something that's set up by default and you don't like it and it doesn't apply, you can always hit the X and then add something new. So the defaults are really good for things that are done Um, 80, 90% of the time, always have that answer. I will show you real quick here. So I'm gonna go back to the the systems view of the roof. These are all the items. You'll notice that um, roof flashing still says NA, so it's not gonna appear on the report. Roof material has an exclamation point. That means that it has some issues and those are marginal. Uh, But let's go ahead and make sure that these all 
show as inspected. So roof flashing was good, skylight was good. I can go here to status and say satisfactory. So everything's checked off, showing up at, in the report as we want them to show. There's a little section over here where you've got your icons. So I've got all my comments here. It's showing that the roof material has two comments, five photos, no disclaimers. And if I go into roof material, you'll see kind of how comments show when you're navigating the systems view. So in this, the comments section, this is just the kind of the description of the comment, but if I open it up, I can remove it. Um, there's suggested actions and then the different pictures that go with it. I can add more by clicking, clicking upload or assign. I can see what this other one has to say. So I've got excessive moss buildup, and this is actually quite a long comment. So you'll see all that kind of stuff there. And then the pictures that go with it. And so it kind of just allows you to double check your work in a quick way by collapsing those and it's not taking up a lot of room. And this is super handy when you're on a mobile device, you don't wanna to have to scroll through a lot. If you wanna add more comments, let's say that maybe you missed something and you forgot to add a comment about this or that, or maybe the comment you wanna add doesn't need a picture, so you just didn't think of it and you need to add it now. To add a comment, super easy, you just click manage comments. You can create new, and I'll show you how to do that. So we can go up here to create new. You can type in any kind of description. The description is important because that is what appears on the summary. In WebWriter reports, the summary is a true summary. It's not just a repeat of the whole report. The summary kind of looks like a punch list. And I've heard that agents really like this because it's not overwhelming. And so it'll just have one or two or however many lines, but you want to try to keep it with just a summary. So you want to explain what the concern is. You have an option to choose from different statuses and they have icons that will appear. And depending on what your status is, the summary will automatically sort the higher priori priority items to the top of the summary and group them together. Um, you can fill out impact and suggestion and other information if you feel like it as well. They're not required. The only required one is the description, but I definitely encourage you to use these fields to expand with your true narrative comments. And then the library that comes just out of the box is available to you as well. You can use the search to find different comments that you're looking for. So just type in a keyword. So we're in the roof material and we'll say missing. So maybe some materials are missing. Maybe half the roof is gone. You can go in and you can either toggle that comment on or off. We can go to show details and you can read all about that comment. And maybe you want to add more to it. So I could say edit comment. I could say missing uh, section porch, something like that. So I could say missing section, you know, there's a whole section of the roof missing behind the porch. I can change the status if I feel like it and modify all that. I'm going to hit save and it recognizes that this comment was edited and it gives you the choice like, hey, do you just want to use this one time, you know, keep the original. This is a unique to this house comment. You don't need to save it in your library. You can replace the original comment or you can add as new in your report, but also keep the original comment. So you're building to your library and keeping the original. I'm gonna choose one time only. This is kind of unique to the property and I'll hit okay and I'll hit done. And there we go. Comments been added. And then a few other things to point out while we're in this item area. We can go down here and there's a spot where you can add a disclaimer for specifically that item. So you just click add disclaimer. If the library has some for this option, it just doesn't, but you can always easily throw in a disclaimer. There's also disclaimers for the whole system itself. So this is a disclaimer just for roof material, 
but you could also go back and maybe the disclaimer pertains to the whole roof structure. And this is where you would find your full component disclaimer. So you go here to add disclaimer, and these are all just about the whole roof. You can add that and hit done. Maybe you need to add more to this section and you need to add another item. You can definitely do it. It's very flexible. So just click add item. You'll want to choose your item type. So sometimes that you might have something that's a duplication. If it's not, and you're just adding something new to this section, choose other and then just modify the name, whatever that may be. Maybe your roof section is, maybe there was something along the lines of a carport and maybe you inspected that roof. We'll just throw that on there. And that adds that. I do want to click here and say that it was satisfactory to get everything looking good. But that's the basic navigation of inspecting and popping around the systems. And then we did cover, you know, going into media and doing some of the photo first options, which is really cool. Um, locations, this is where you would go and do that as well. But I highly encourage if you're doing this workflow to go to your template and line it up so it matches what you're expecting it to look like. And then we did overview. So we've kind of hit all the main basics of the web writer. When you're done with your report, if you're on, let's say you're on your mobile device and you're using the app, just hit sync. Maybe you're working in Teams. The web writer works great for Teams. Let's say you're both using the app, hit sync, and you'll be able to see each other's work. If you're working in Teams and you both have good data, you know, you can actually just use web writer on your mobile device through your browser and you can see what your teammate is doing in real time. So you don't have to hit sync. You can just kind of be filling it out. And as you pop around, it kind of populates what they're doing too, which is really cool. So next, what you would do is do a preview. You can preview at any point. I will say the app doesn't have that preview button. So if you need to preview and you are in the app, you do want to hit sync and then actually just go to the browser and view it. But hopefully that's not a use case that comes up all the time because a lot of times previewing is your step before you publish. So I'll hit preview here and it quickly generates the preview where you can kind of scroll through and check everything out, make sure things are filled out. You'll notice the summary here sorts from most important to uh, the more minor maintenance items. So I've got, my major concerns and then the buyer can just click on the hyperlink and it takes them to the full comment all right so i'm going to go ahead and share a feature for people if there's anybody from texas on the call texas has its own special print format so i'll click on print format and i'll go to texas and they have this special thing that is required in their state and so this is what you would want to do it fills everything out in the trek format and then you would click publish report. Just going back to my standard real quick and I'll click publish report. I get this pop up that says one more time. Are you sure you want to publish to the dashboard? We'll say yes. And then the last one is OK, your report is being published. And do you want to send it out? Of course you do. So if you click view report, you get linked to your inspector dashboard where you should see your report and you can send out your emails to your clients to say that the report is ready to view. So here I am. I've got my lovely lane. I had added an agreement to it, so you'll see that right here. And then now I have my inspection report. I've got my agent and my buyer already showing up below the report, and that is because I started my report with an appointment. And so another reason why starting a report with an appointment is the best workflow because you don't have to add your agent or your buyer details later. So I've got my report ready to go. And what I wanna do is I wanna send my email. So this says send emails right here. And I wanna send the inspection report. So I'll click on that link. On this page here, it just gives me a couple options. I've got, I can either say that the person has viewing permissions of the report. 
Um, I can also say they have forwarding permissions in this area as well. So Susie Homemaker, the buyer, um, the inspection report is read, meaning there are no permissions. Like she can't see it right now if she logged into her account. So I would want to, you know, make sure that Susie has permissions. I already had permissions for the agreement, and that's good. I want to keep those. You never want to uncheck the agreement permissions. So just don't do that for your buyer because next time they log in, they might not be able to see it. You know, maybe they haven't signed it yet. It could cause issues. So always make sure to keep the agreement checks uh, checked when you're sending out your report. And then for Maria, the agent, she does not need to see the agreement. So I'm going to leave those unchecked. And I'm also going to give her permission to view the report. A quick way to do this, you can always just do view, select all, forward, select all, and then just uncheck the agreement for the agent. Just a fast tip. And then next you hit send. So this is your send emails. It will send out a notification, give your buyer, your agent, their login information and all that jazz. If you wanna kind of see what that looks like and you're new and you've never used HomeGage, you can scroll down a little bit and you can see what the email will look like. You can customize it. If you've never used HomeGage before, you might be like, what is this? So anytime there is like a dollar sign with something in brackets, you don't touch it. You just leave it alone. HomeGage is going to pop in the right information there for you. So it knows who's getting what email and it knows that person's first name. So when you hit send, Susie's name pops in there. Or if it's the agent, you know, Maria's name pops in there. Same with their information down here. Just a little bit about that if you're new to HomeGage. If you've been using HomeGage a while, I'm sure you've seen lots of those replacement variables because they make life faster and more efficient. <laughs> Everything is good to go. We're going to go ahead and hit send emails. I'm in a little section where I can actually schedule some time release messages to go after the report, maybe for a thank you. I can schedule that, maybe annual inspection program, maybe a Google review. You can watch my lunch and learn on TRMs about that, but I'll go back to all reports and just quickly point out that now we've got Lovely Lane, the agreement, and the report all sent out, ready to go, and that kind of concludes it. So we'll have a couple minutes for Q and A. It was. I have a question. Sure. Um, when you're doing this for the first time, because I usually just use HomeGage, the Templates that we have, can we export them to this or you have to start all over again? We don't have that option available yet, but our product team is working on that. And that is definitely a main focus that they are in the works. I don't know when. And is the library filled with the same amount of comments that are in HomeGage or is there more or less or what would you say about that? Good question. That's a good question. I'll have to figure out specifics on that. I'd say it's comparable or perhaps even more. And just two more quick questions. Sure. When at the very end of HomeGage, just before when I say upload, it kind of does a check and says, if you hit no, it tells you what you missed in case you missed something. Maybe I missed a style or something like that. I didn't really see that happen to you when you were about to do publish. And then also, I had to buy a non-Mac just to do my report when I do home gauge. Can this work on the Mac? Yep. Um, so yes, it can work on any computer and it's going to look the same. You know, you're not going to have different instructions depending on what device you're on. It's all going to be the same. So yes, Mac definitely test it out. So when it comes to check your answers with the regular desktop, it has that pop up. Webrider doesn't have that yet. And I made a note of that. I, I kind of forgot about that. So I'm really glad you brought it up. I'm going to be bringing it to our product team. I know people have brought it up in the past. I'm just going to bring it up that somebody talked about it here because I honestly forgot about that awesome feature too. And I don't know where it is in the roadmap but I'm sure that it's somewhere because it is a great thing to have. All right. Well, thank you all for joining and I hope you have a wonderful day.